Rachel holds a grenade without the pin in Monroe's tent. One of Monroe's troopers pushes him out of the way, and one takes her down and throws the grenade outside just in time. Aaron witnesses Rachel being led to the tower in chains, cutting off his chance of getting into the tower. Unlike Randall, Rachel is granted access to the tower. The group with the security cameras witnesses Monroe's entry, and takes their weapons, getting ready to fight Monroe. Miles and the gang land their helicopter four miles south of the tower. On their hike to the entrance of the complex, they hear a noise. Neville pulls out his gun and runs into Aaron. Aaron tells Miles there is a way into the tower but only if they can find a way around Monroe's troops. Inside the tower, Randall shows Monroe the control room, where the US government's satellites still have live feeds of the entire planet. The tower has the capacity to do anything, and is impervious to everything, but they will have to get to level 12 first. Rachel is shocked when Randall reveals this, but Monroe marches his troops to the elevator, ready to witness the entirety of the tower's potential. Monroe and his group take the elevator to level 12, but it stops at 11. Something is wrong. Monroe's men step out to figure out what is going on as a klaxon starts blaring. Suddenly, the spying group from the tower starts shooting Monroe's men. They fall one by one as Rachel runs for cover in a safe room. Monroe follows her, and when she tries to stab him with a knife, he wrestles it away from her and demands to know who just attacked them. Outside, Neville and Jason take out the militia encampment's power source. Aaron and Miles rush to open the tower doors, as Monroe's men descend on them. Aaron gets them inside just in time. However, only Miles, Charlie, Nora, and Aaron can get in and they are forced to leave Jason and Neville out when the door shuts. In their little hiding place, Monroe asks what happened and who are those people in the tower. But Rachel simply has a casual no idea as an answer. He angrily declares she needs to work with him if they both want to live. Since she's the woman who is willing to blow herself up to kill him, it's pretty clear that they're both dying is quite acceptable to her. In a flashback, nearly a week before the blackout Rachel expresses her doubts to Ben. But Ben insists everything will be fine and the weapons won't ever be used. Back to the present, Jason and Neville have been tied up inside one of the militia's tents. Neville gets to meet his old comrade Franklin, who interrogates him on how to get inside the tower. But Neville wants to talk about Monroe's instability, and killing his friends and biggest supporters. Miles, Charlie, and everyone else gets down to level 11, where they see all of Monroe's people have been massacred. Aaron notices the other elevator is on the move and warns the group, someone is coming. They don't wait to see whom it is, fleeing to a nearby laboratory room. Aaron sees something that bothers him in the room. But before he can investigate, the people outside the door start to blast their way in so Miles and everyone else flee through an air duct. In their hiding place, Monroe and Rachel are having some deep conversations. Monroe seems to come to grips with all the blood he has spilled. He tells Rachel about the son he has never met. In a flashback, this time four months after the blackout, Ben has rigged a computer and is using his power medallion to try to contact someone. Rachel comes in and is despondent over all the death their invention has caused. Ben tells her she needs to stay alive and hopeful if only to protect their children. In the background, the computer hums to life as Grace attempts to contact Ben. Back in the present, Aaron tells Miles about the special guns the tower people are using, weapons that use electromagnetic power instead of bullets. Aaron's notebook on the tower has a map that shows an armory with the weapons nearby. Miles breaks off from the group and gets there, but it has been emptied. Outside, Neville is talking to Riley. Tom tries to convince him that the only thing wrong with the Monroe Republic is Monroe himself. Jason chimes in and tells Riley that the best person to lead the Republic is Neville. Riley seems mostly convinced but he isn't ready to be part of a revolution. Inside, with Nora's help, Miles manages to overpower one of the tower people and get their special weapon. Rachel and Monroe can see what is going on via some TV monitors. From the monitors, Rachel sees her daughter Charlie with Aaron. Miles says that if Rachel helps him get out of the bunker, he will make sure that Charlie does not get hurt. Charlie and Aaron get split from Miles and Nora as they are chased. Nearby, one of the tower people gets the drop on Charlie and is about to shoot her when Monroe blows the guy away. Rachel walks up to Charlie and drags her to come with her, despite Charlie's reluctance. Monroe goes off, leaving Rachel, Aaron, and Charlie alone. When they make their way outside the room, they are soon cornered by some of the tower people. Meanwhile, Monroe finds Miles and Nora. He has an electromagnet weapon aimed at Miles and Miles has one aimed at him. Rachel, Aaron, and Charlie are taken away by the tower people. Grace is with the tower folks and greets the group warmly. She goes up to Aaron and tells him he is well known to them. Rachel sees a man named Dan whom she knew many years ago. He and his people were in charge of protecting the tower. He tells Rachel that he and his children and his children's children will protect the tower for all eternity. He explains level 12 is way too powerful, and it cannot be risked to let anyone go to it. Outside, Riley comes to visit Tom and Jason Neville. 
He says it won't be easy to take down Monroe. Saying so, Riley unlocks Tom and Jason's handcuffs. He hands Tom a gun and says that if they take out Franklin, the rest of the troops will fall in line and follow Tom. Back on level 11, Dan wants to burn the tower notebook which will tell them how to turn the power back on. Aaron pleads with him, talking about all the good they can do and how they can restore society. Dan burns it anyway. Yes, the lights may come on if the switch is flipped. But Grace says something else could also happen. Rachel says the odds of lights coming back on are one in a million. To this Grace adds if the tower's switch is turned on, they may run the risk of setting the entire world on fire. Meanwhile, Monroe and Miles are facing off, both aiming their coil guns at each other. However, they are interrupted by the guards of the tower, who causes them to join forces to escape. They successfully make it to an exit which turns out to be part of the water main system. While attempting to cross it, they fall into it when a tower guard shoots at the pipes. This leads to Miles and Monroe being washed out of the complex, while Nora is left hanging onto a ledge. Deep in the tower, Randall breaks a portrait of former US President George W. Bush and recovers a spare keycard. In the living quarters, Grace and Rachel are arguing over the risks of shutting down the nanites, which Rachel claims are replicating out of control. Jenkins announces to Rachel if Rachel tries to access level 12 to turn the power on, he will kill her. After taking control of Monroe's encampment, Neville tells loyalist, Major Franklin, that he is free to leave, then shoots him in cold blood. When the gunshots bring Jason and another guard running, Neville claims Franklin took a shot at him first. Miles wakes up on the shore of a river only to find Monroe waiting for him ready to continue their fight. Both former best friends duke it out until a militia soldier fires on them. Monroe orders the soldier to hold fire and announces himself, but the soldier fires on him and runs into the woods. Monroe turns back only to find that Miles has left him. Monroe flashes back to 10 years after the blackout when Miles and Monroe are in a bar celebrating Miles' birthday when a bomb explodes, severely injuring them both. After poking around the tower's computers, Aaron grows very upset. Grace confirms that he wrote the code that the Department of Defense bought to use for the tower's operating system. She suggests that Ben Matheson didn't meet Aaron by chance. Outside, Neville has stacked a pile of C4 against the tower's door. Jason is stunned to learn that his father is trying to prevent Rachel Matheson from turning the power back on at all costs. Neville begs for Jason's help, knowing that Jason hates him, but they need to work together or they will die. Jason agrees but he still wants Charlie and Rachel alive. A militia scout informs Neville that Monroe is in the nearby woods. Rachel tells Grace about Danny Matheson, born three months early with undeveloped lungs. She fought so hard for his life, but she couldn't save him. Now her intention is to stop the militia and set things right. She appeals to Grace, who also lost a child. After all, the odds of things going wrong are one in a billion. When Grace stands firm, Rachel chloroforms her, grabs her keycard, and locks her in a room. Then joins Charlie and Aaron, who have been in on the plan from the start. Miles flashes back 10 years after the blackout. He wakes in a bed in Independence Hall after the bar bomb. Monroe tells him the rebels planted the bomb. Monroe brings Miles to the window to watch five coffins being loaded into a wagon. Not only did Monroe kill the bomber, but he killed his family, with the intention of making an example of them. Back at the tower, Aaron tells Rachel and Charlie that he built a back door into his code, and it is open. Furthermore, he thinks the blackout was not an accident. Someone did it on purpose. That is when Nora shows up to say she has no idea where Miles is. In the woods, Miles is attacked by Monroe but Miles subdues him instantly. Monroe wants to fight but Miles tells him he has his own problems. Monroe reminds Miles about how he tried to kill him and started all of this. Miles tells him that the reason why he tried to kill him is that he killed so many innocent people. But Monroe tells him that he did it for Miles so that he could protect him from many people, whom Monroe thinks they're dangerous after the blackout had made everyone aggressive. Then, one of Monroe's helicopters flies over the two and starts firing and they make a run for it. Miles escapes, but Monroe gets captured. In the tower, Nora and Rachel talk about what happened to Miles. The four see the group and Nora concocts a plan. Back outside, Monroe is brought inside Neville's tent who is now the leader of Monroe's group. Monroe wonders how Tom got to the tower and replies that Miles flew him here. Monroe says he is going to have Neville and his wife killed. Neville tells Monroe he has turned foolish and demented. Jason then comes into the tent and Monroe is surprised to see Jason alive. Jason reports to Neville that something is going on in the tower and then leads him to the tower, leaving Monroe in the tent. Rachel, Nora, Charlie, and Aaron make it to the stairwell, leading to level 12. However, they are unable to access it, being beaten to it by the dwellers in Dan. Nora sets up an explosive trap, set off via tripwire, to kill the dwellers. However, Dan spots it and bypasses it. Nora then sets off the trap using a fire extinguisher, killing Dan and the dwellers, though she is mortally wounded. 
Back outside the tower, Miles enters the tent where Monroe is held and releases him. Miles states that they are still brothers and this is never going to change. Miles tells Monroe to run and then shouts Monroe is escaping, and is able to make a run to the tower and sneak inside. Grace wakes up and tries to find Rachel, but is confronted by Neville and his militia. Charlie and Aaron try to help Nora, while Rachel spots militia coming. Charlie wants to first save Nora and then go turn the lights on. But Nora agrees Rachel is right and they have to do it for the rebels. Rachel then tells Charlie to lock the door and takes Aaron with her to level 12. Charlie stays with Nora and Nora screams as Charlie tries to tend to her wound. The militia soldier busts in and fights Charlie, but is then suddenly stabbed in the neck by Miles. Nora asks Miles to go help Rachel and Aaron, but he is never leaving Nora. He scoops her into his arms and they go to level 12, but Nora dies. Neville and the militia catch Rachel and Aaron on level 12. Neville orders them to come with them and forget about the power. Then a few seconds later, Miles, Charlie, Neville, and the soldiers engage in a shootout. Rachel then makes a run for it and is able to swipe her keycard then lets Aaron Charlie, and Miles in safely. Charlie informs Rachel about Nora's death. Aaron enters the code successfully. Outside the doors Neville wants his militia to blow up the door from which Rachel and the gang just entered. Back inside the doors, Aaron expresses his doubts, but Rachel then tells him to turn on the power anyway. Aaron enters the code and presses the button. The lights slowly turn back on across the world. Back in Atlanta, Foster sees the light go on as a Georgian soldier comes into her office. She orders him to throw everything they got at Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Outside of the tower, Monroe is out in an open plain, where a crazy wild unnatural lightning storm starts. Back inside, Rachel's group hears gunshots that are revealed to be caused by Randall, who is launching nuclear missiles at Philadelphia and Atlanta. Rachel tries to talk Randall out of his plan, but he presses on. Miles unsuccessfully tries to shoot the bulletproof glass. Randall shoots the button that could destroy the missiles. Randall states that he doesn't care about Monroe. The only reason he went to Monroe is to wipe out Georgia. Then he would wipe out Monroe, so the East Coast would be clear. Randall claims he is a patriot, and then shoots himself in the head. With Randall dead, all that the group can do is watch in horror as the missiles get closer to their destinations. An unseen man turns the lamp on and off as another man comes into his room stating Randall's success. The man calls him M. President. This President of the United States has been hiding in a colony at Guantanamo Bay for the past 15 years, waiting for Randall to fulfill his mission. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos.